if you were writing a follow-up to the very prescient uh, Forbes, uh, I'm sorry, Fortune magazine article from November 1999, in which you were talking about the lean and fat 17-year periods, what would you be writing? Yeah, the 17 years, of course, I had a little fun with because of the fact that there were two 17-year periods and there are also 17-year locusts, so I, I, uh, I stretched it a little uh, from a literary standpoint, but there's nothing magic about given spans of time. There was something very different between the first 17 years of that 34-year period and the second 17, and I use that for kind of, kind of a dramatic uh, contrast. Uh, if I were writing something now, I would say what I said just a little earlier in response to Frank Martin's question, that, that it is, if I had to own uh, a long bonds or a long-term position in equities, I'd rather have equities, but I would not have high expectations for them, but I would have expectations beyond four and three quarters percent. How much beyond, I'm not sure, but something enough beyond four and three quarters percent that I would rather own equities than, than, than bonds. I did not feel, I felt in 1999 that people were extrapolating the experience of the previous 17 years and assuming there was something magic about owning equities and expectations of the people were bound to be uh, they, they were, they were, the people were bound to be disappointed. They, they simply had an unrealistic view by extrapolation, and that was the main purpose of that article. But if I were writing something now, uh, I, would not, I would not have high expectations for equities, but I would have better expectations for equities than for bonds. Charlie? Yeah, and I would say that since that article was written, the, the results from owning equities have been pretty lean, at least compared to what happened in the glorious 17 years that preceded. So Warren has been right so far, and he's probably right now when he says uh, modest expectations. Yeah. You, you really don't have, in, in markets, you can't say something terribly important or or intelligent every day or every week or every month. That's one of the problems of if, if you went on television too often or <laughs> to write weekly letters or something of the sort. Every now and then you get something extreme. I mean, I, I, did, I did close down the partnership in 1969 and an article appeared. I did give an interview in 74. I gave another interview in 81 or two. I mean, every now and then things really get out of whack. And, uh, but the gradations in between, uh, they're too tough. Uh, but the nice thing about it is you don't have to have an opinion every day or every week or every month. You know, if, if you own some good businesses and you bought them at the right price, if they get to a silly price, you probably should sell them. And if you find that, that uh, everything is extremely cheap, like in 74, you should put every available dime into, into equities. And that's what we've tried to do.